discussing today is the brand new uh, Smashing Pumpkins album, Agori Mori May, which I actually had to look up how to pronounce because it's a ridiculous name. But at least Billy Corgan in an interview <laughs> has clarified how to pronounce it. Uh, Agori Mori May is the 13th studio album by American rock band The Smashing Pumpkins. It was released on August 2nd, 2024, but only digitally. The physical version of the album is scheduled to be released on November 22nd, 2024. Uh, however, that physical edition will be an expanded version named Agori Mori May, Madam Zuzu's Edition. Uh, so Eric, maybe a discussion point for later, but let's first talk about the album and then we could circle back to the whole digital versus physical release dates being different, which is a bit weird, but, uh, your thoughts on, uh, the 13th studio album by the Smashing Pumpkins. So I'm all like, I wouldn't say that I'm a huge Smashing Pumpkins fan, but I do like a good portion of their music. Like they are like they have a unique sound to them um especially in their earlier stuff uh this album it's very well sounding like it sounds sick i really like the first song eden i thought it was a cool opener i was like wow they actually like added a bit of heaviness to them uh with that song and it was just like i don't know i thought the uh progression of the song was like perfect even into that like slow chorus and then they went back into that riff the that was a cool thing uh then like the hits were at the very top half of this so you have eden pentagrams and uh sigomi 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 maybe it's sigomi i don't know how to pronounce that uh I thought Pentagrams was intro. It was like there's parts I really liked of the song, and then there's parts I didn't like. Uh, but then after the third three songs at the beginning, it just kind of took this weird, like downward spiral. And I I wasn't a fan. Like I actually found myself listening to the album. So the first run through, I was like, ah, oh, it's like Billy Corgan has an interesting, unique voice. It's not like in a lot of music. You can definitely pick him out out of any. He's like, oh, this is Billy Corgan, hundred percent for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but I found with this album, the more I listened to it, there are songs on this album that I figured that like, I feel like somebody else would sing this better, right? Like, like if like so, for instance, number six, who goes there? I felt like now the beginning half of the song, it kind of. I didn't like the key change in the song very much. <laughs> I just thought, especially with his voice, maybe it was just his voice and it was just like, okay, it's kind of annoying. But uh, that song, I, all I pictured was like a uh, uh, Eddie Vedder singing that. Oh, so, interesting. And I would be, I just like this, this, this has like Eddie Vedder vibes to it for, for me. Um, and then there was uh, War Dreams of Itself. I felt like it would be cool for Disturbed, uh, the singer for Disturbed, to sing that. I was like, okay. I, I just, I just pictured, I just started picturing all these artists that I'm like, man, like this person would have sang this way better than Billy <laughs> Corgan. Uh, so, I, I don't know. I thought that the band was really tight. Actually, like it was super tight. They had some cool melodies, but there were songs that I felt like uh, I was like. Like uh, Pentecost, I wasn't really a fan of. I just thought it was very out of place mm-hmm. uh, yep. for the album. And then uh, Go With The Fall, uh, I did not like that album or that song either. It, it was just it was just an odd sounding album. Yeah, very disjointed. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's uh, a good word to put it, disjointed. Yeah. I know. I, I do agree with you. I, I did like the beginning of the album because, okay, I guess some background. Smashing Pumpkins, I do not listen to the Smashing Pumpkins. I've never listened to them. So this is technically the first uh, first album I have listened to by the Smashing Pumpkins. Uh, additionally, whenever the Smashing Pumpkins comes on the radio, I change the radio station. Cause, <laughs> cause, so I actually don't know if... if like I obviously know Billy Corgan's voice and then I find it annoying and I switch the radio station. So I've never actually listened to a smashing pumpkin song. 
uh, in full, which is, I don't know, it's, I, I was thinking about, I was like, that can't be right, but like, I actually can't name you a song. But um, when I first listened to this album, the beginning, I was like, oh, this is actually pretty cool. I was like pretty mm-hmm. impressed. I was like, oh, there's some like heaviness I wasn't expecting on here. Uh, and I do agree with you. Like the beginning of this album, pretty good. The first three songs were pretty good. Uh, but towards like as you keep going this album, it's just like, what are these songs? What's going on with this album? I was like mm-hmm. really confused at like why these songs, some of the songs were like in this order or on this album. Uh, and then some most of it just like started to drone out. And I was like, OK, I can't pay attention to this anymore. Uh, the only thing that really stood out for me was uh, War Dreams of Itself, uh, track five, mm-hmm. when he goes like 6-6 six, six, Cicada. I was like, that's a pretty cool rhythm. I don't understand what it means. I'm sure there is some like like hidden meaning within all these songs because it seems like a very proggy, elevated sort of everything has a meaning to why he's saying these things or playing the way he does. Uh, mm-hmm. But I really like that rhythm. Uh, I just don't know what it what it's in reference to. Um, but the whole thing, uh, your take on the different vocalists is, is funny to me because now that you <laughs> mention it, I was like, ah, yeah, this, this album would have been much better with a different singer. Uh, mm-hmm. But Billy Corgan is who he is and uh, obviously a very accomplished songwriter. Um, but his voice, I don't know. It's It's in that like it's in that tool vein where it's like, okay, it's impressive. Like obviously, yeah. but it's sort of annoying at the same time. <laughs> well, it is. And, and like pentagrams, like the second song, like when, like in the middle of the song, he, he kind of goes back to the beat, like love never dies. A love, love is ice. And he just can't, the way he says love, I'm just like, okay, like <laughs> just, I don't know why you're saying it like that, but, um, but like, he's a he is a good songwriter yes, like yeah like even even the lyrics too um like uh labyrinth milk syringe who leaves the gates gold scorpion scorpio pay as you go uh like like he's just very he's very good with words and he uses big words which is not common in yep. songs like he uses iridium uh like like it's 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 impressive the song itself it's very intellectual and, yeah 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 very intellectual but it's just the voice behind it isn't (laughs) you know yeah that's sort of the problem like at some point it's like i mean i know you're trying to say something but you can't get over the hump of like the tone of his voice or the way he he delivers things it's like uh, i can't really pay attention because it's so like grating which is unfortunate because i think the guitars the drums the bass the keys like they're all sounding really tight on this record uh not just like how they're recorded but even the arrangement they're all sitting really well in the mix Mm -hmm. so uh i think eden is the best definitely the best song on this album Mm -hmm. i absolutely thought i was like oh my god this album's gonna sound (laughs) sick and 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 then after the third song it was just like yeah, yeah. When I Pentecost was the one that was like, "What the hell is this doing in this <laughs> in this album? It doesn't make any sense." Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I don't know. It's it's an interesting record for me, uh, specifically because I've never listened to the Smashing Pumpkins before. Um, so I was like pleasantly surprised with the the beginning of this album, but as it kept going, I was just like, I don't, I don't really care for this band. I'm going to continue not caring about this band <laughs> after this mm-hmm. album. Um, all right. Maybe we should talk about this because I, I found this interesting. They've only released this album digitally as the current one to 10 tracks. Mm-hmm. The physical version is set to be released later this year in November. Uh, and it's, but it's going to be essentially an extended version. Um, potentially some songs taken out uh, potentially songs in different orders but definitely additional tracks added on um so i guess in the current format i don't know if it's actually going to exist in a physical format which begs to question like why do you have a digital version of this album mm-hmm. that is one to ten tracks in this specific order and then you're going to have uh, like a different version that is a completely different album in a p- 
potentially different order with different songs. Like, do we know how many songs no, are going to be on that I one? I don't know yet. It's, it's not. I don't think it's announced. I mean, I could probably look it up. Maybe if it's come out recently, but I don't know how I feel about essentially a DLC version of an album. It's weird. But you can only get the physical copy. <laughs> yeah, that's like a physical version. It's. I can't even imagine. That's like a video game. Like you buy a video game and it's only digital, but then you can only go into the store to get the DLC. Like that would be maddening. Yeah, like I don't, I'm not mm-hmm. really sure like why you would do this. Uh, That's interesting. Because I think Billy Corgan is the type of guy that's going to have, he's going to make all the shots, like call all the shots from like producing this album even though he might not have been the producer mm-hmm. i don't know who produced it but um he's probably calling all the shots because sure. he seems just like that guy right yeah so he definitely chose to have or agreed to having a digital copy and he probably chose songs on this so th- that's very interesting mm-hmm. uh oh confirmed so it is 12 tracks he is essentially just adding on two songs onto the album two songs at the very end i wonder if those two songs are going to be better than because like i can tell you there's two songs on this album that i would take out instantly yeah so no he's okay so he is going to keep one to ten as it currently stands in the same order and is going to add two songs at the end two songs interesting i don't know it's the so you can only get those two songs if you physical edition physical edition i mean i assume Mm. it's going to go on a streaming platform at some point but like yeah as like a separate thing but i don't know how i feel about that like why not just put those two songs on the the digital one now why yeah like i i feel like the people that would buy your physical copy is going to buy it when it comes out right like they they're not buying it because of the two additional songs i don't think yeah most people that buy the albums want the album because they want the physical thing not because Mm -hmm. there are bells and whistles attached to it see i think he's pretentious though to the point where he probably thinks uh these are only for the like the loyal fans (laughs) the true fans (laughs) the true fans the true fans that are out there (laughs) I don't know, it, but it, it's interesting because like, uh, I guess Billy Corgan isn't doing like an extreme version, but I was thinking like, oh, you release a digital version of the album today and then in six months time you release basically the same album, but you just rearrange all the tracks and add things and take songs out as like, a, I don't know, an alternate version of the album. <laughs> like I could see a band doing that in the future where like they do two releases or three releases of the same album, but it's just in different, like Trent Reznor did that a lot with his stuff, right? Like he, he would have like the downward spiral and then it would be followed up with like the downward spiral. I think it's called like still or something, or I think that's fragile, fragile still or something. It's called something like that where he has like the original album and then he has like a a weird, like acoustic quieter version of the album. Which I think makes sort of sense, but then what happens if a band like has like two versions that are just because they decided, oh, we didn't like how we did the first one? (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, that that would be interesting. I don't know. I I, like I'd have to see it. I'd have to hear it done. Yeah, like because it could get ridiculous, right? Yeah, just imagine. like dark side of the moon and they're just like oh we didn't like how dark side of the moon came out so six months later we're gonna do uh the the yeah. real dark side of the moon <laughs> <laughs> like you know how maddening that would be margin. as a fan oh yeah i wouldn't be able to keep up yeah I don't it'll know. be like hey i like i like the song money which version all right, like the Ro- you know? Roger Waters has his uh, his Dark Side of the Moon version too. Yeah. Like that was madness. Like why? That was just why. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that was insane. Yeah. Um. Anyways, so th- this album, 
I started strong, ended weak. Uh, I don't know. I'm. I think I'm gonna stay not a fan of the Smashing Pumpkins <laughs> after this one. Although, like you know, Eden Pentagrams, like that that really caught my interest. I was like, oh, these are legitimate, like really good songs. Yeah, and and it's cool because like the way the song flows too. It's just not. It's it's very interesting. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Right. Um. <laughs> Okay, Eric, final thoughts and ratings on Agori Mori May by the Smashing Pumpkins. I mean, I listened to their last release for their last album. I don't think we reviewed it no. on here. I think I just listened to it. It was on my list of albums that I listened to. It was Autumn. Or did we, did we do that one? No, we didn't. I, wasn't it like a, a triple release or something like that? Something crazy. Yeah, it, it was. And, and that was the only one I, I listened to. Um, wasn't a fan of that one. Again, there was like one or two songs that I really liked. I act like I don't mind Smashing Pumpkins. I think that their older stuff is better. Like you got Siamese Dream, uh, Melancholy, and the Infinite Sadness. But uh, this album, I don't know. Top half is good. Everything else, I it just didn't get it. There's probably some underlying underlying meaning. Because Agori Mori May, and what's the, what's the last part of the the uh, the one that's coming out here? Oh, uh, Madame physical... Zuzu's edition. Yeah. So, who the hell is that? <laughs> don't know. I don't even know what Agori <laughs> Mori May means. Mm-hmm. So, Billy Corgan, if you're listening to or any diehard Smashing Pumpkins fan that absolutely thinks that we're uh, you know, this blasphemy that we're saying this, uh, please comment and tell us what this all means, please. Cause, <laughs> um, so final rating, I'm going to give this a five out of 10. Yeah. Okay. Five out of 10, because I did enjoy the, like the band itself. Mm-hmm. And, and it just, I, uh, maybe, maybe I gave it a little bit higher because then I started kind of like, Oh, this would be cool. If, this person sang this song, right? So right, yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm gonna give it a little bit higher. I'm gonna give it a six out of ten on my part. Like, I, mm. I still think Billy Corgan's voice—it's like it's a detriment to the band. It's just, it's just so annoying to listen to him sing, which is unfortunate. Well, it fits in certain songs. That's the problem. Right. Some songs you're like, this actually fits his vocals very well yeah. but then other songs i'm like you just sound like a whiny airy person yeah yeah yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so like man like the band sounds good the song writing's like pretty good and there are legitimately good songs at the top half of this half of this album but like I don't know. It just loses the plot at some point. And mm-hmm. I'm sure intellectually there is some deep meaning he's trying to get across. But if you can't enjoy the music, I, I don't even know if the message is worth it. So mm-hmm. I'm going to give it six out of 10. Cause you know, I think if you're a smashing pumpkins fan, I feel like you might enjoy this and trying to like deep dive into like all the little, little, like, you know, lyrics and like why he he wrote these songs and all that but it's something i wouldn't be interested in because the music itself is just like it's just a pain in the ass to listen to Mm -hmm. which which is unfortunate because like if you have a really intellectual album you better make the music good in in order to draw people in so that they really deep dive into like all the hidden messages you're putting in Mm -hmm. because no one's going to look for those hidden messages on crap music (laughs) Uh, but i'll give it a six i thought it was okay Mm -hmm. uh all right perfect that is our discussion on agori mori may by the smashing pumpkins Uh, for those of you following along with us every single week the album that we are going to be discussing will be uh another day by fucked up which i'm pretty excited for a hardcore band from Toronto, Ontario, Canada. So, oh, it's um, I don't normally listen to hardcore music because they're a bit too punk for me. But uh, I feel like this is gonna be a good one. So we'll see. Uh, Sweet, 
I don't think I've ever heard of these guys. Their their claim to fame is because they're called fucked up. So there's whole uproar decades ago being like, how oh. can you name a band so vulgar? <laughs> 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 Those were the days, right? People uh, yeah. being offended by. Now we have songs like WAP. <laughs> Even though that's an old song now, yeah, probably true. to the kids these days who are like, "You guys are old." <laughs> that was that was famous like a year ago. Yeah, or two uh, years ago. Anyways, uh, that's it. That's it for the podcast this week. Uh, oh, let me get rid of this off the screen. This is Crossroads Music Podcast here live at twitch.tv slash the Crossroads Music Podcast. We're live here every 10 p.m. ET, 7 p.m. PT. Uh, thanks for tuning in. Chasing Dry Flies, thanks for showing up. Uh, catch us on Spotify, Apple Music, all the places where you get your podcasts, uh, and the YouTube channel where the album reviews go up, and that's where you can uh, provide your comments. Tell us where we're wrong. Tell us why this album is the greatest album of all time ever created. Mm-hmm. <laughs> 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 all right uh that's it for another week uh thanks everyone for tuning in and we will catch you all next time <laughs>